Greetings fellow witchers and welcome to my guide on how to defeat enemies that are of much higher level than you. This channel is sponsored by Gameon at GameonCY.com. Check the description below to see how you can optimize your gaming purchases. First and foremost, we're gonna start with the Red Skull variant of enemies. That is, an enemy that is of 6 or more levels stronger than you. In this case, we're talking about a lengthy fight, no matter the type of the enemy. Here we will be dealing with the Grave Hag, one of the most dangerous and aggressive enemies in the game. Some things are standard practice when fighting strong enemies in the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. First and foremost, you will be using your Quern all the time. As long as you have the shield on, you can take a blow from the enemy. If you don't have it on and you get comboed, you will die. As you saw here, I just took one hit from this enemy and was at 35-40% to health. So have the Kuen on all the time and go on the offensive only when you see an opening and the enemy has botched his, her or its attack. It goes without saying that you cannot go into this encounter unprepared. Before you go into such a prolonged fight to try to defeat a skull enemy, you have to know what it is first and foremost, so you can apply the correct oil on your blade. If it's a necrophage, like the hag here, you should use necrophage oil. If it is an elemental, like a golem, you should use elemental oil. If it's a beast, beast oil, etc, etc. Also, having a grind stone in sight and maximizing your weapon's damage by grinding it and getting the timed boost, as well as your armor, will help immensely as will the Thunderbolt Potion, because when you see an opening against this foes, you really have to take advantage of it, like an enemy that is staggered, an enemy that is slowed, etc, etc, you have to go in and go in hard to deal damage. Also, don't bother fighting enemies like this if they have regenerative properties, like if you see an Algul that's 10 levels above you, and you feel brave and you wanna fight it, like it's not a good idea, because when it starts regenerating, as a werewolf will, per se, it could be healing faster than you can damage it. And because you can't really go gung-ho on these monsters and just keep spamming attacks, it's gonna be a lose-lose situation for you. So anything that's not got auto-region, it's a go. Anything that's got auto-region, it's a no-no. Against humanoid enemies, you can always go for the parries and counter-attack and eventually you will be able to overcome their defenses and defeat them but with monsters this is not gonna work because you can't really parry them or block them so you have to learn how to evade while shielding yourself you always have to look for these combos like a hug can do a double hit combo that even if i have a quen on it's gonna break through the sign and then damage me for a huge amount of damage so you have to also perfect your dodges before trying something like this. Also, very important, know what works and what doesn't. For example, here I'm showcasing how the Irden does not manage to slow the hag, although it's at 40% plus intensity. So I should not be using the Irden here. The Axie, for example, can't slow her down and I should be using the Axie, or not a sign at all since the effects are so meager. Just keep your stamina for the Quen, etc, etc. You have to pace yourself, there's nothing to discuss about this, it will take a long time and you have to be patient, you have to be careful, even if the enemy is left with a meager amount of health, it can take you out in a couple of blows. You get punished here by the game, actually, for fighting enemies so much stronger than you. You should be dealing more damage, you should be taking far less damage, but because it's a skull enemy, it's a designation, it's pretty much a showcase of the game kind saying no don't go you get slaughtered it can be done but it's gonna be very challenging and very taxing and if you fail you'll have to start all over again here the battle took approximately five minutes and it was a non-stop onslaught on both sides if you don't wanna get involved in something that is early on don't attempt it don't go half hearted in this because you're gonna suffer humiliation and you're gonna just get tired and get bored as you can see here, I managed to do it, but it took quite a bit of time. Preparation is key and you should have the best ammo available for your level. Here I'm level 15 and the enemy was level 28, so 
almost double my level. My mutagens are the best I could have at this point, plus 40% for the signs and 28% for my blows from the red mutagen. And my gear was the 14 level best case scenario, not the 15 because I had just leveled because I, before I hit this. Have the best gear you have, be prepared with oils, potions, bombs, whatever is at hand, it is very difficult but it can be done nonetheless. Defeating these enemies of 6 levels or more above you, it's possible but it's very very difficult. Also, you might not wanna try to do this against flying foes apart from the regenerating ones because they can be pretty tricky. Another scenario is fighting enemies that are really tough but don't des get designated as skull enemies. Here we will be fighting an Elementa, a golem per se. These enemies are very hardy by nature, like an Elementa is pretty much armor on legs. So you might want to go for some armor piercing on your runes when you're fighting these guys. Here the enemy is level 20, just 5 levels above me, he's at the threshold. So I don't get a skull, but he is much stronger than me. You can see though that the Irden affects it immensely. And this is because it's not designated as a skull. So use the Irden when fighting enemies that are much stronger than you and can take a lot of punishment just to slow their advance. It should also be stated that an enemy that is strong but slow can much more easily be tackled even if you're under leveled just because if you know how to dodge they're never gonna land a blow or they're gonna land a blow then you can retreat for a bit heal yourself recast queen go in there and damage them again very important when fighting enemies that are of this level of durability is to know when to go in and go in as hard as possible. In this showcase I did have a thunderbolt on me and this was due to the fact that I fought it just a bit after the Haga showcase 2 minutes ago. But I did have my Elementa oil on and it made a huge difference. Also note that the Elementa oil and all the oils in this game have a durability based on hits, dealt and time. So in the beginning of the fight, when the still, you still have the oil applied and it attributes to your damage, that's the best time to use your potions as well. As long as the oil is in there, Thunderbolt is gonna be that much more effective. So don't wait to use it until the end of the fight. Use it when you can get both the benefits at the same time and go in for hard damage on the enemy. In any scenario like this, you should not be stingy with your potions, especially the healing ones. You get a swallow as soon as you get damaged, even by a meager amount. The psychological effect that these enemies cause to you is very observable and I'm gonna explain what I mean. Even if you manage to overtake them and get them to low health and you start feeling confident, you might lose. Losing such a fight that takes such a long time is gonna tire you, it's, it's gonna make you angry, you're gonna get annoyed and the next time you try it you might be just a tad more aggressive, more careless and lose again and this can go on forever. So it's better to waste the potion to heal a little bit and then survive a hit and be done with the fight and get your loot and be on your way than to just try to be very economical with your supplies and get destroyed a couple of times and then have to take a break before you can try again because you will be oozing raids out of your ears. So pace yourself, use what you need to use to be successful. Don't overdo it, but don't be stingy either. In death march especially you can't be stingy with the consumables because every fight is a battle for survival. If you try to do stuff like this in the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, fighting enemies that are above your level or skull enemies etc etc, you have to go all out on them. As careful as possible, as precise as possible and as well prepared as possible. Oils, grinding your swords, preparing your armor, getting your potions ready etc etc. Difference between this enemy and the hug before it 
is that since it is not a skull variant, it can be affected by your glyphs. Your glyphs should always be utilized, uh, I mean your sign, sorry, to the best possible effect. A third case we should consider when doing this is enemies that are easily afflicted by crowd control abilities. Here I'm casting Axie on the Cyclops and start butchering him so he really doesn't even retaliate. He has a ton of health, he hits me when he comes back to his senses, his senses. I recast Axie, recast my Quen and keep butchering him. Humanoids or human-minded enemies like this that can be charmed can be a breeze even if they're of much higher level than you. So, as I stated in the first part of the vid, always check what works and what doesn't and utilize what works in the best possible way. It's not a good idea to just torment yourself by going all aggressive with enemies like this that can destroy you with two blows when you can just stab them on their tracks with a charm and kill them without taking any damage and risking take, risk taking any damage yourselves. Be smart about your approach, utilize what's at hand and after a few tries and a little bit of effort you will get the hang of it and you will be able to tackle much higher level enemies without much faster travel. So this is it guys, I hope you found it useful. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt guides that I'm making are promoted through Fextralife and Fextralife.com, your best bet for reliable info on the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Check the description below. If you found this useful, don't forget to sub, like and share it. And until next time, be well, stay frosty and always strive for perfection. Cheers.